All right, hello. We are going to be using the Sweet Poppy stencil stamp here, SP6125M as in Mary, L as in Larry. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to try something that I haven't tried before. Look how cool this looks though, just as is like that. Um, but I'm going to try to use the printable vinyl holographic sticker paper here to get this kind of interior imagery going on here, okay? And that's, uh, since this is like a, you know, a whatever, deciduous leaf here, um, I thought I would do a, um, a deciduous leaf type of image in here, okay? But just stamping it directly on the vinyl, I would do that um, normally with some Brilliance White blocking out technique in here. All right, but we're just going to be trying it directly on the template <laughs> area of resist. So uh, I don't know. That's the, that's the best way I, I can explain it off the top of my head here. So what that means is I'm going to use this template to create this little bit of a background in here. I still want some of the holographic paper to be showing. Hello, Beth. And um, let's see how this goes. So I'm really not sure how this is going to go. This is kind of like spotlighting, but with a stencil format here, uh, five and a half by five and a half inches. So it just happened to be um, roughly the size of this entire template here. So uh, just by chance, I didn't uh, do the, uh, the paper after measuring or anything like that. So um, I don't know, I thought about doing a longer piece too, where we'd have a scene in the background, but the spotlit area would be the place that's blocked out and colored in, and then you'd have kind of just a black um, printed imagery continuing on the side like that. So let's, let's just see how this goes here. Um, I have a rough idea in my head of, you know, what the technique could look like. I'm just not sure what it, I, 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 I can't visualize it, okay? So we're just going to have to test it out here and see how it goes. Um, um, okay, so Brilliance White. So I'm going to be adding this in from the perimeter just so we get some um, application of this white everywhere. And then I'll be blocking out more where I think the image is going to go. I think I'm going to do the image up top here and I'm going to leave a little bit of space in here for this little canoeist down here. So, um, I just need to keep that in mind and try to apply this white pigment ink accordingly, okay? So again, uh, I can't visualize this one in terms of how it would look. I'm just kind of doing this off of um, theory and it's not necessarily a theoretical idea that it's going to come out <laughs> or work at all, okay? So, okay, so templates are really great. Um, the, the difference between this one, I, if we did this on a white piece of paper and you did this with tone, I can see that because I've seen it before, okay? But the difference here is, is this is like a reverse idea of that. You're going white into a colored paper and then not only that is it's holographic and um, you know, I'm going to be stamping the image right over the top of it. Um, I'm not sure what the perimeter of this is going to look like because I'm not gonna be masking this off. I'm just going to be stamping it directly on here. So you're gonna have this black image going in here and out of it. I, I don't know if we'll be able to see the leaf at all um, in that area or if it will be defined enough um, I don't know. So that's that's the part that I just don't know about. And I don't know. I mean, if this doesn't come out, it doesn't mean that, oh, you know, this isn't a good combination. It's just, you know, I, that's what I happen to use this time. Maybe it would work better with uh, other types of imagery, maybe more solid or something like that. But one of the things I really love on the holographic sticker paper um, is the use of uh, like colored pencils or the ability to use harder media. Hello, Jeannie CM, it's Tammy, good to see ya. Yeah, I like the Sweet Poppy stencil too. I'm gonna have to use it just regular, you know what I mean? I've been using these stencils um, 
on, you know, like on foils or something like that. Um, you know, like, like this three-dimensional mirrored space or something like that. I should use it just traditionally, too, because I love that look of it. But it's like you start using some of these papers and stuff like that, and it's like, oh, I can definitely, you know, I can see potentially, you know, using it, you know, a certain way, and I get curious about it. Where it's like, okay, I've seen those other ones before. I love them. And should do them, but um, it's like you, I don't know, it's like when you start experimenting and whatnot, if you, if there's something that you don't, haven't seen before, it's just like, I, you know, you have this notion of a, or a hunger to, uh, you know, test something out. It's like a, it's like an addiction or something like that. We feel compelled. <laughs> All right, so this is going in here. Let's see, let's block off roughly around in here. Like that. I need to have something for those colored pencils to grab onto, so that's what this white pigment ink is going to be providing. Yet, like I said, I don't want it completely blocked off because I want some of this holographic um, surface to be you know, within this imagery down here, especially like in the water. Okay, that being said, let's use it right here. Okay. Kind of roughly seeing where the image is on here. Hello, Cecile. Hello, everyone. I hope you're having a great day. I'm stamping to you, coming to you from a very rainy afternoon, morning here. Um, we're expecting over an inch and a half down here in San Diego, um, which is a lot of rain. Even, you know, a half an inch in a day is a lot for down here or out this way. Um, but it said an inch and a half, so it was just kind of a steady rain. I thought there's no way we're getting a like anything close to an inch, but it just kind of started picking up again a little bit heavier. We need those reservoirs to be filling up. Of course, like flooding and like billions of dollars of damage. No, we don't need that at all, but that water's a problem. All right, so I think that is it. It's always one of those things. You got to get that um, white ink down. This is what this looks like right here, of as far as where I've applied it. Okay. Um, because once you stamp the image out and you start coloring it in, you know you can't add more um, sub, you know, sub impression meaning underneath the impression ink, you can only apply it over the top of it. So just get down an adequate amount. I'm, a, I'm going to be teaching someone a, a class in foiling. They haven't seen the videos before, but they liked what they've seen on um, Facebook. And I was asking them, all right, what inks do you have? They said, oh, okay, they got the black and white brilliance as well as some other colors. I said, do you happen to have a white brilliance re-inker? <laughs> So hopefully they do, because we use quite a bit of it. Oops, okay. I bent my template a little bit there. It's so narrow right there on the edge. Okay, so let's see here. Painter's tape. Oops, I took off some of the back, but I'm going to mount this anyways. And again, this is sticker paper, so you could just, you know, take the whole thing off if you need to. All right, this is where... Um, you know, I was kind of curious. Okay, so this is going to go right around here. Maybe I'll, what I'll do is I'll fog off the edge a little bit, meaning um, after I ink this up, I'll just kind of blot off the edge a little bit so it doesn't stamp so distinctly out here. But I was kind of curious if I should just carry this out, and this is kind of this interior little area, you know, that's illuminated. I just don't think this is contrast, you know, where if I stamp a whole scene out here that this is really going to stand out 
if I add too much imagery around it. So, uh, I don't know. Hey, oh, wait, 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 wait. You know what I should do on this one? I should do this right here, like this. Okay, so we have that white in there like that. Doing the block out for um, the colored pencils or media to color on. But I should do a little bit of a vignette of black on this and we'll contain that um, autumn cove uh, here. Okay, so I need that tape again. <laughs> uh, for anyone that hasn't been watching before, um, I don't plan these out completely, if at all, okay? So, no, I... I Someone, someone's going to be watching. They just say, it, you know, I'm watching an instructional video and he doesn't know what he's doing. Well, in a lot of them, I don't know. I'm just, uh, you know, it's more akin to, uh, I'm going to try something out and, I'm, you know, I'm hitting, um, I'm hitting, instead of record, I guess I'm hitting um, go live. <laughs> So definitely one of those. It's more of a, it's more of a, like a impromptu jazz performance than a rehearsed classical. <laughs> it's all about improvisation and uh, and uh, and praying. <laughs> okay, so here's the brilliance here. So you get what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a little bit of a kind of a halo around this, or or like I said, vignette. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, let's see here. Uh, hello, uh, Sandy, whoever joined in here. Sandy, Beth, did I already say that? Uh, I'm a spur of the moment kind of person, kind of as the mood strikes me. I love it. I am too. As you can see, <laughs> I mean, not all the time, if I'm going to, you know, like on those recent videos, I said, okay, I'm going to do some more of the lighting type of, uh, you know, kind of exercise. It's just because I have a stack of um, stamp sketches that it just goes, ugh, it goes on forever. I almost feel inclined to just keep working on those, but I thought, okay, I already did three videos like that. But I don't like having a bunch of kind of unfinished cards like this, um, you know. Um, it just, when I look at a piece, I just, you know, I automatically think, okay, I think I'd like to do this, this, and this to it. it when it's on paper. This this one right here, I haven't done anything like this before, so I don't know. But But those other ones, I can, you know, I can see a little bit more of a... Uh, you know, the potential in them or, you know, definitive types of uh, looks and whatever on them that I'd like to uh, do on them that I think would, you know, would uh, would really finish them off nicely. But, um, okay, so on this one right here, it'd be pretty cool too. I'm doing a black vignette. Can you guys hear that? Those coyote, that pack of coyotes, it sounds it's like, like it's almost like right outside my window. I think they're definitely right across the street, if anything. We have a kind of open area across the street. And I have a feeling there's some sort of den on the hillside there or something. Wow. All right, just open my window. Let's see if you can hear that. They're either coyotes or hyenas, I'm not sure. <laughs> they sound like hyenas sometimes. Oh, they stopped. Maybe they're maybe they're watching the demo.
I think it stopped raining briefly, so maybe that's why they're out, out howling like crazy. Anyway. Okay, so adding this in and going in, I don't know, I'm going in a little bit farther, um, just depending on the... Um, Oh, the proximity to center here, so on these extended little areas of leaf structure. Adding a little bit more. I think it kind of looks kind of cool as is, man. Maybe the image that I'm going to put in there is going to be more distracting than anything. I don't know, we'll see. Okay, let's create a little bit of a stronger application right at the kind of the more the most distant of areas on the uh, on the imagery. Okay. All right. See how that looks right there. Huh. Let's go in a little bit more. I'm thinking about um, that image on here now. It, I guess it depends on how far I want that image to, um, or how much I want that image to kind of disappear into this vignette right here. I mean, right here, there's hardly any of a border at all on it. Okay, maybe I need to go in there a little bit more. I, I you know, I mean, I can do this and then... If I need to give it a stronger vignette, then you just add more to it later. But there that is, like that. Okay. Oh, you can hear it. Good, you can hear them. I'm glad they, the microphone picked them up. Some, and in one of the other previous videos, um, they uh, someone can hear, said they can hear them, but then some, another person said they couldn't hear them. Um, that's, you know, I didn't open the window up either. But yeah, they're pretty loud. They, it, it happens at all times during the night, too. Sometimes you hear them at midnight. I went out there one time. Or I've, I've gone out there a lot to just see if I could see them. I don't always see them because they might be in the, up in the bushes or something like that. But that, that those ones sounded really close. Yeah, you got to watch. Uh, if, if some people have cats or anything like that. Uh, you cannot, you know, you can't have them out running around uh, in this neighborhood at, at nighttime, at least. I, I'm not quite sure during the daytime, but I know how, I know some people have missed their cats because my neighbor, um, one of my neighbors in back of us, uh, came to the door one time and uh, was asking if we've seen their cat around. Now, I didn't even know they had cats, so, but, uh, yeah, there are people that let their cats, you know, just kind of roam around. So, if they're roaming around here at nighttime, uh, probably not a good idea. So they're probably checking on the uh, checking where their uh, checking where their pets are these days. Okay, so I'm going to really blot off the edge, and we're, we're I'm going to try to have this kind of feather out around that perimeter. Because my original idea was just to stamp it out there and have it break beyond the, uh, the leaf structure, but I, I don't think that's going to look too good if I do that. So I'm going to really blot off this edge really good on here. I don't know if I'm blotting off enough. You know, this um, pigment inks, you know, they're really thick, so sometimes I don't take off enough. But I also don't want, like, a harsh edge, you know, just where it ends abruptly. I kind of want it to taper off a little bit. So sometimes I'm not really quite sure how to, how much to do because I, you know I don't take off enough and then it prints out of the boundaries of where I want it to appear and then other times uh, you know you take off too much so it just depends on you know how inked up this is too because I'm usually not doing that type of thing with pigment ink I'm doing it with dye based ink so um, okay let's see down here.
All right. All right, I have a feeling that some of it is going to go beyond that image, but if it does, so be it. <laughs> I think I've taken off enough here. I used to have um, I used to have a house up in uh, Los Angeles, but it was in this area, Los Angeles County, not the city of Los Angeles, and. Um, it was on a in these hills, the Whittier Hills, and um, my house back, you know, was right on the edge of a canyon. So it really, you didn't uh, feel like you were at anywhere close to a big, you know, urban or living in a big urban area because you have this big area of open space in the back, you know, full of trees, and you know there was like a little stream back there, and. Uh, and whatnot, but um, what I'm getting at was the, um, there was these coyotes that would, especially in the summer months, they'd be laying on the uh, the back kind of walkway um, in the shade, you know, just to cool off. But I'd see those those ones all the time, and deer, you know, would be uh, laying up there too quite often. All right, this is really sticking, but that happens. All right, there it is, right in there. Okay, it went up here, <laughs> and I. I'm not going to get that off, I don't think. I might be able to add in um, some white back in there. Maybe that's what I'll do. Okay, now you can see it printed out a little bit out here. But let's add in these colors on here now, okay? And see if we can get some sort of definitive type of, it just looks like texture right now. But let's see if we can give some definition into this area like that. Yeah, I loved uh, hearing and seeing wildlife too. So that was one of the really nice things about um, that house in Whittier is, um, you know, I saw that wildlife. Uh, so definitely coyotes, skunks, uh, raccoons all the time. Um, but those deer uh, would come around and uh, I don't know what else was out there. One time, I swear, we saw, I thought I saw a wolf or some kind of fusion of it, you know, like a bred with like a, I don't know, domestic animals or something like that. And it was a rainy, stormy day. It was just kind of walking, you know, I saw it walking kind of just rain soaked, uh, whatever it was. I mean, it was a wild animal of some sort, but that's just ruling away. But um, someone else told me they thought they saw one too later on. I was like, oh, you saw that? You know, they thought it was a wolf too. It was definitely not someone's like a uh, domestic, uh, like pet. But I always liked uh, seeing um, everything going on out there. Um, okay, so I have a bunch of colored pencils here. So we'll do some kind of fall foliage in here, okay? All right, so um, let's see if I've colored enough in here um, with the white pigment ink behind here. So it's hard to kind of see what is down there. Okay, so there's a little bit of a foil right in here, so I'm not quite sure if this will apply to that area, but we'll see. Um, so I'm just going to give a little bit of a base layer of a much warmer tone. Maybe I should go to more neutral here. Um, well, it's not neutral. It's, you know, it's, it's a warm tone in yellow, but kind of something that we can build, um, like your oranges and reds and greens. So what I'm doing right here, what I'm getting at is, I'll just show you. So this is like your colors, you know, spectrum right here, like if this is a color wheel or something like this. So if you do something like this, and if you're going to add in some sort of um, spectrum like this, greens and yellows right here, here's your kind of neutral right here, right? Because that yellow is in these colors up here, and this yellow is this also in these. So here's that neutral kind of, you know, point right here. If I start moving into like, violet tones or something like that, then you'd have it more kind of, you know, like this right here, or um, 
No, it, it here, switch that. <laughs> It'd be something like, you know, I hardly have any purple violet tones in my colored pencils there. I don't know. I don't know if I was still being like a kid where my purple crayon was the one that was always kind of, you know, kind of wiped out. But see, here's kind of the neutral in something like this. It would be the blue, right? Because the blue is a component of the greens and the blue is also a component of the violets right there. Okay, but we're not doing that, you know, we're doing, you know, this. So what you do is you start with the base layer color of your neutral hue, okay, that you can build on, you know, with, you know, the other color schemes on there. So you can just lay this down over everything like that as an undertone. And I'm going to stay within the leaf uh, structure here, so. Uh, I can add some of this down in the reflections down here too. Now I'm not, I'm being careful not to add too much of this because of uh, the fact that um, while you can use your colored pencils and they were will transfer onto this white brilliance ink that's been applied there, you can't apply just so much. You can't apply it like you can if you're working on a piece of, uh, you know, uh, you know, white, you know, matte cardstock or something like that. You know, at at some point in time, on this really thin layer of brilliance ink, you're going to achieve kind of super saturation, and it's not going to transfer on there. Okay. So just you know, use accordingly. The harder your the harder your media, the less you can probably use on that uh, brilliancy. Because remember, we're not really using so much of this colored pencil on foil, right? Because it doesn't, it's not going to really adhere. But you're, so you're coloring brilliance ink that's been applied on there and a very thin layer at that. Yeah, those were loud. <laughs> that was a, that was just about as loud as I ever hear those, those get. Like I said, it was probably like right out and practically, you know, like directly across the street. So I don't know what that would be like. I don't know. 20 yard, 20, I don't know, 15, 15 yards, maybe. Let me see. I don't know. Whatever the, you know, distance of a, of a street. Okay, so th these are the greens down here. I'm adding that into the grassy area. I wanted to hear more of them though, you know? It's almost like they heard me open the window or something like that, and or I don't know, like blinds too. Do you think the stencil would interfere with the stamp if you stamped with the stencil in, yo, oh, definitely. If I stamp with a stencil right here and try to get this right here, there would be this stencil right here, like in between here, there would be no impression at all in this place just because, I mean, the stencil isn't super thick or anything like that, but there's just no way that it would get anywhere within the, this entire space, like right here and up. It would only maybe stamp in here if at all you know because it would i'd have to really compress it in there but good question um but yeah you know with stamping with rubber stamps you have to have things really quite flat um if there's anything like uh at all down there i just think it would uh it would interfere with that all right, so I mean, uh, let's see. So that was green, and let's start moving into our um, warm tone, kind of, you know, deciduous fall foliage types of colors up into the trees right here. Already applied a lot of that neutral um, yellow and kind of a golden yellow. Now I'm going to apply, I think, the acrylic paint pens in here too, so that should 
those will really influence the um, overall look and coloring of this right here. So, all right, this is a little bit of an orangish tinge. The thing that really surprises me is like, there isn't a lot of, t you see, you can see that holographic right in here where I didn't go over it because I wanted some of those reflections of this perimeter to be appearing down here. You see, you can see it, that holographic underneath this whole area right here, but even just with a, hardly any um, of that brilliance ink applied on there, this color right here is still applying on there a little bit. See, I don't know if you can see a little tinge of that orange right there. So I, I don't know, that's like a little sandy area. Oh, maybe I'll use a little bit of uh, brown in that area too. I need to um, sharpen these pencils pretty soon. Now some of my pencils are just too, um, they're too hard. Okay, they're all, they're all um, Prisma colors, but not all colors are kind of created equal in terms of their softness. So some of them just don't apply very well, if at all, okay? So just keep that in mind. Um, you know, the softer the, the, the lead or whatever, the wax, um, the easier it is to apply on this type of surface right here. Like this one's not going on too much. I don't know if it's because I've already kind of built up a lot of uh, tone on there already. Relative, I mean, it's still a pretty thin application, but um, on this type of paper right here, because once you lay down a little bit of a, see this brilliance ink right down here, I mean, it has a little bit of tooth to it, but then when you lay down a, a couple layers of colored pencil over the top of it, you know, that wax is building up on there to where you no longer have any tooth for this to grab onto. So, you know, just keep that in mind. But um, like I said, the, um, okay, this one's really soft. Um, the acrylic paint pen's really fun to work with. So what you're kind of doing here, I've mentioned this before in my videos, is there's this kind of methodology in a lot of different forms of art you know, where you think of adding thin to think. You, you start off with a thinner kind of media and then you progressively work thicker on there because you can't really add like a thin layer of something over something that's already thick. So you're working kind of thin to thick. So um, that really thin layer of brilliance ink, a lot of times brilliance ink can be thick if you're using it with, in conjunction with dye-based inks because the dye-based inks are a lot thinner but uh, this is where you're starting off with a very thin layer of pigment ink. And then, you know, waxy colored pencils, they're fairly thick if you can get them to apply, right? Because wax is thicker. And then acrylic paints are going to be thicker than that. So again, you're just kind of working thicker and thicker and thicker. And then what I do is I often go back in and I add in some white over the top of that, so because it'll adhere to it. It's not really thicker than anything, but you know, pigment inks are very surface oriented, so it can be applied like that. All right, so let's see. I'm adding some of this red into that ground cover because ground cover during in fall toned areas, you know, that ground cover is often equally as uh, kind of exciting of a color as, uh, you know, the leaves. All right, so there's a little bit of that. It's too bad I got that up there. Um, I should have blotted that out a little bit more. I guess I could add another leaf out here. I mean, it doesn't have to be one leaf. You can have, you know, we can go like this again and have like another, you know, leaf out here and then have another one like out here, but less so, you know what I mean? You just kind of have it a little bit lighter or something like that, but I can kind of put that in another um, kind of haze of a uh, black, you know, uh, tone. Maybe I'll do that. But this is an experiment to see how this would even look. So I just want to see if, uh, I just want to check on the media here. 
it's one of those things when you're experimenting around with stuff, don't worry about kind of like particulars like that. Get your techniques down and everything like that. And maybe your second piece that you could do will be designated for like the Museum of Modern Art. Okay, your first piece does not have to, you know, every kind of thing that you're testing does not have to be museum quality. You know, your second piece is, you know, that. <laughs> That's what I always mention to people. I, I joke about that, but it, but it is the case. You know, a lot of people are kind of, like in a workshop or something like that, if they're kind of hesitant to try something out, um, I just say try it, you know, it's, you know, you can see if you like something. Often it's, t most of the times it's not going to be a, you know, uh, a success failure type of thing. It's just, you know, there's degrees of uh, finish within a piece and, um, you know, maybe, you like it, ah, 10% more, you know, or 10% less or something like that. It's not usually where, um, you know, you try something out, some kind of little application of something and, all right, something's gone wonky with my camera right here and focus. Um, let's see this. Come on, come on. There we go. Okay. But yeah, just test things out and don't worry about, um, you know, it, my camera has a hard time focusing on full, uh, mirrored kind of ref super reflective surfaces a lot of times because it doesn't know where to focus in here because there's no kind of definitive thing. But yeah, just test things out and see how it goes. And Let's say if something just absolutely doesn't work out, you know, you'll learn more from that than oftentimes from successes because you know kind of what not to do or whatever going forward. You know, if you're working on like, you know, some sort of thing, you know, um, like a 18 karat gold <laughs> covered paper, you know, Maybe, but then you would be practicing on something, you know, doing something before then if you were got to that point. Okay, so I think that is it as far as the coloring goes on here. Okay, let's see. Does he see that right in there? Okay, let's add in where'd my blue tones go? Let's hit some blue down here. Um let me stamp this little canoeist out right now because I want to be able to color right around him. If you're going to stamp something out in there with your different types of inks, you can use um, dye-based inks over the top of that brilliance ink too. I'm just using the brilliance ink because it's very fast drying and whatnot, but the printable vinyls will pretty much take any type of ink that you have. You can do a VersaFine Claire on there too, and it'll stamp and dry on there just fine. But uh, what I'm getting at right here is do most of your impressions before you apply something like um, uh, colored pencils because, you know, a lot of things do not adhere to colored pencils very well. Okay, now, see this down here? Uh, kind of debating because, see, there's all kinds of colors. There's blue, right, like right in that water area because it's the color of the printable vinyl anyway, okay? But um, I think I am just going to add some of this blue tone down here anyway. So that'll have some inherent coloring in that area anyway. Or you can just add it down into your area that you've applied your um, white pigment ink to as well. You know, not color in this area right up in here. Okay, this is going on with a very light, almost warmish tinge blue. 
aquamarine. So that's my lightest color. And then I'll just work incrementally a little bit darker like this and keep it a little bit more perimeter oriented. I'll give it a nice little shadow to that, uh, you know, being cast by the canoe down here. All right, I like that look right there. It's going to look different from different angles too, but um, I don't know if you can even tell what I've done here. With, you see that, that blue there? There's the blue without um, kind of any of that uh, holographic part of it reflecting in there. And this is what it will look like in here. And it's just a little tinge, but there is a little bit of a gradation. It's hard to tell here because uh, it's very subtle anyway, but uh, you can kind of get the gist of it right there. Okay, so... Uh, hello, Candy. Good to see you. Thanks for uh, checking out the uh, checking out the stream here. What we're working on here is a piece of printable holographic sticker paper, um, not to be mistaken with uh, holographic cardstock, and we have just used. A stencil to kind of create this little interior area right here. We have a little blunder of mine where I've overstamped up here, but I might take care of that with the, some additional texturing like this. And I'd have to do it a little bit offset. Let's well, like something like maybe like that right there. I wouldn't put this in here, but um, yeah. I don't know. We'll see. we'll see. Okay, but what I want to do is I want to test out um, my pens now in here. And I'm going to pull out the same basic color scheme that I used in my colored pencils. So easy color schemes, um, at least in terms of uh, whatever theory and application, just whatever colors you're using in your various different media, dye-based inks, colored pencils. Um, I don't really do it with the uh, pigment inks, but um, I do it with everything else. I just use the same colors that I used in the other media. And I just line them up. Here we go again. Now, I'm lining it up for your benefit uh, here, just, you know, because you definitely see it just visually all right here. But, um, oh, this is just kind of going off into a, a range of tones here. I grabbed the wrong pen here. I could use this one, but. So this is kind of your, your deciduous, you know, fall tone leaves right here. And here's my grasses right here. Again, where's the kind of neutral one? It's right here. But here's the difference here. Those um, colored pencils are a little bit more transparent. They're translucent, but you can see the colors underneath. So instead of working from my neutral and darker with my colored pencils, okay, with transparent media, dye-based inks, alcohol inks, etc., I work from the darker tones in because if I put... Um, like a light color of this over the top of this, it will show up because it's more opaque, okay? Um, if you try that with colored pencils, you lay down like a dark green colored pencil, and then you try to use like a yellow one over the top of it, you know, it's not really going to show up very well, if at all, okay? Because that yellow is going to be showing right through to that green, but it does work with your more opaque media. All right, so, Let's see here. I don't even think I, I... I've already have some decent shadow work in here, so I'm going to use like a light green in here, okay? And then we'll work into the yellow, and then we'll work from reds through the oranges to yellows up in my tree areas up there, and more of the deciduous types of uh, areas, okay? So for the little kind of grassy area right here, this... This green, sorry I can't zoom in, it's 
Uh, okay. Ah! It was just there. It's, I don't know why this is like so sensitive to um, that. It's. A, I think it's the software that I'm using because when I do these non-live types of videos, which I hardly do anymore, but I did it. It's like, oh, okay, the cameras are just working just fine um, in terms of focusing. But um, with these live ones, I don't know. There was something to it. Okay, here we go. All right, but what I'm doing is I'm adding this over on the top sides of my little forms in here. In in this autumn bank image, there's uh, all these little tufts of grass in here. So you can kind of, I hope you can see that. <laughs> if you can't see it, apparently there's nothing I can do about it because I can't zoom in more. But I'm putting it on tops of the tufts of grass in here. Just kind of making them stand out and shimmer. You kind of, you, you want the, the area in here needs to kind of come alive. Uh, I like making it come alive on any type of paper, you know, white cardstock or whatever. But especially when you're dealing with papers that are this kind of exciting, you kind of have to have the imagery, um, you know, step up. It's not going, the imagery when we're using these types of inks, colored pencils and stuff like that. It's never going to be, I don't think, as dynamic as this paper right here, okay? But it can, it can, um, I don't know, it can, uh, it can hold its own, you know? Anyways, okay, so here's a little bit of this yellow right here. And I'm just do it, I do it in little forms of dots. I guess you can do little check marks or something like that if you know how to, uh, you know, uh, do something like cross hatching or something like that. I don't do that. I have a little bit more control over just kind of applying kind of a little dots. And if you want it to stand out a little bit more, then you make your dots a little bit denser and, you know, just covered with more of them. All right. But I don't know, you can kind of see that little coming about in there. We'll go on with the red. Red's going to be, this one's pretty, light uh dark and bright i i don't have it like a I, I wish i had like like this color of orange like a reddish orange but we're just going to be jumping here i don't need to use all these colors right here but we'll go with something like this right here so it'll be a nice range of tones all right now this is fairly dark so i'm adding it down it could be a pretty good foundation in here of tone. It's going to look kind of weird because I don't have this brightness of red in here. But again, it's my foundation color in here. So I'm going to have a lot of these other colors over the top of it. And they are opaque. So, um, you know, what you see is not what you're going to get, you know, just right after the application of this dark and bright red okay so you can use quite a bit of it uh, knowing that you're just going to be covering it up you're not going to be covering it of 100 percent or something like that we're going to be able to see it and benefit from it but um you know don't worry if something like is standing out kind of weird looking it it always looks a little bit weird okay i'm adding this down to this deciduous or not deciduous but the ground cover area okay so down here okay orange it's a lighter value it's a diff you know slightly different color but related but lighter sounds like some good weather there linda I don't know, my hat was in the way there, sorry. I'm working on these really fine little areas of the uh, piece. And I, I'm not just trying to stay exactly on any kind of tree because, 
you know, it gets a little bit obscured in there anyway. So it's just kind of, it's kind of like a, um, I don't know, like an impressionist's kind of a approach on, uh, you know, whatever painting light, I guess we are kind of painting here because these are acrylic paint pens. We're just doing it with a marker here. Where uh, the definition really starts to come around a little bit more is when we get to um, white or the just those lightest of colors. Okay, let's see. One of these yellows is really, yeah, I think this is one. Some of these um, paint markers, um, they're almost, they're almost transparent. There's hardly any pigment in, the, in them. So you can't really see it too well. I get maybe, well, maybe this one just needed to be shaken up a little bit more, but uh, I don't know, keep that in mind. It, it, there's, I don't know, it, that's in this Artistro pen set. I'll show you what this looks like. It doesn't really show up very much, but if you go like that, you can see where I've applied all that um, paint, all those paint dots, okay? We're moving into yellow. I might be being a little bit concerned. Maybe I should add a little bit more, but yeah. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. Oh, it should be said, I typically don't like the look of this. Um, type of technique on here until I add a little bit of white pigment ink back over the top of it and it just kind of mellows it out a little bit. Okay, so we're going with that kind of more neutral, you know, type of um, hue in here again with the yellow. Um, so the yellow is both in the grassy area down below and up in the trees. You might have a little bit of a different look to um, when this type of um, acrylic paint dries. Even though I said it's kind of more opaque, it's it's still see-through. Um, but um, the so the colors underneath will show through a little bit. So this orange where it's been applied up in this tree area will look a little bit more orangish, you know, yellow orange or whatever where the one in the grass is going to look a little bit more yellow-green. Okay, I think that is it with the yellow. The yellow is starting to really, def actually, maybe I'll use a little bit more. That yellow is really starting to define those trees really nicely. Now that I see what they look like up in the trees, you can add more down to your grassy area if you need to. Uh, okay, here's what I haven't been doing here. I haven't been adding it down in the reflected area. Sometimes I tend to forget about that. So let's add a little bit of that down here, too. It doesn't have to perfectly mirror what's going up top, because there's no way I'm going to be able to do that anyway. So it's getting some of that down in that reflected area. Like about like so, and... Here's what I like to do. I think this really kind of adds a lot of dimension to my um, tree areas, be it whatever you're working on. Um, let's see here. Travel dreamer. My ideal situation, like in the northern U.S. in winter, and then uh, Adelaide, Australia, in the winter. I could skip all summer. <laughs> um well, that's what some people do. I, not that particular, you know, um, transition right there, but, uh, you know, we're really close to like Palm Springs and, uh, 
when I used to travel to um, Phoenix teaching, you know, I'd just be talking to people. A lot of people, you know, a lot of people are in Canada and they live, I think it was Canada they were, they were saying, and then they live in um, uh, like Arizona, you know, uh, during certain parts of the year. I, I guess during the winter time they come down to, uh, you know, or in Palm Springs, you know, the desert communities. All right. So, here we go with the white now, okay? Uh, let's see, do I want to add anything else before the white? I guess that's it. So this white is going to kind of add a little bit of a contrast, or a lot of contrast in here. And I do it on the very tops of things, like little tufts. Can you see where that water... <laughs> Let me try to zoom in a little bit more. Maybe I'll put my hand here. Eh, okay, that's, see, it's got a wobbly there. Okay, there we go. Yeah, this mirror is just reflecting back and it kind of make my makes my camera go a little bit nuts, but I'll keep an eye on it make, to make sure that it doesn't go out of focus. But um, see this, I'm adding it kind of on the little tops of these tufts right here. And white really works on these holographics in terms of, uh, you know, both the, um, like the brilliance white, pigmented white, and, you know, paint pen uh, types of um, white. Gel pens would work, I'm guessing, just fine on here too. Like a white gel pen. Or colored gel pens too. Let's say you don't have the... Um, acrylic paint pens like these. You can use, um, I would imagine gel pens will work over the top of the Brilliant Sink just fine as well. Glad you like the look of it so far, uh, Linda. Linda D. Kind of real simple composition right here just in terms of this leaf and then the, uh, the imagery on the interior right there. All right, maybe I'm going a little bit nuts with that white in there, just kind of making it shimmer a little bit. Okay, but what I'm getting at right here is these deciduous trees, just inherently in the imagery. Oh, okay. I have these little highlights, believe it or not, on all of these trees, okay? It's really thin, and then it's also down here in the, uh, the reflected area, but, you know, when you color all that area in like that, you know, you don't have that definition of the, those highlights anymore. Um, I can see, still see them, but they're colored, but I just go in like this and I just redefine, you know, those highlights back in here. It's, it, you know, you kind of have to just kind of invent it a little bit too, because um, you have a lot of the, um, the, uh, the paint pen work all in there. So it's kind of, you know, it's really hard to to see sometimes even the trunks anymore, but so you can just kind of, you know, create new ones like you just put the line in here. Now I'm doing these little branches. You just kind of come off the, uh, you know, the main trunk, or you just kind of add a little um, trunk just wherever you want in there, or or, or branch. Okay, like that, and then we'll put it down here as little reflections. Okay that I, I do have the trunks down in the reflection area drawn into the design. So, so there's little things like that down there and it looks a little bit more dimensional to a lot more dimensional. All right, there. That's a little bit more dimensional now. I think that 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 paint really, you know, holds up pretty decently, uh, you know, against that uh, background now. I mean, it's because I just colored it, but my attention is going right to those um, trees in there as opposed to this area out here. 
Um, let's add a little bit of the like highlights down here around our little canoeist. Okay, so that's that little um, reflected area down here. Let me see if I can show you this. Okay, so that's what it looks like all with the holographic. You have that holographic kind of showing down in that water. This is what the media looks like um, just with all, without all that reflective um, you know, surface of the, uh, you know, you know, the holographic doing what it's doing out there. So, but see with that additional little holographic kind of influence in there, it looks really cool. Like even in here, like you can see that little holographic kind of showing through some of the imagery, maybe not so much in here because that got really opaque and I added more tone in there. Anyway, you can see this whole holographic reflected area going right up that area on the, uh, you know, the cove like that. So it makes for a pretty fun little thing like that. All right, no, so, okay, so that is, there's a lot of little tiny dots, you know, this image is crawling with little highlights and coloring like that. So what you do is we started off with that white pigment ink in the background, right? And then you go with all of whatever media you're going to be using in there. And I like to go kind of full circle with my media oftentimes. So you go with this diffusion of, you know, media in the background, okay? And then we're going with um, the colored pencils. The colored pencils are pretty detailed, but not in this situation over the top of uh, holographic inks and things like that um, that are surrounding it and sometimes showing through a little bit. But then you get to something a lot more defined in the paint pens, okay? Now this is going back to white and diffused again, okay? So it's kind of diffusion, sharp, you know, sharper, sharpest, diffused, okay? Or you can think of it going from something very light, going through your darker media, you know, in terms of different colors, and then you're just going back to white again like this. So you're kind of going full circle like that. It's the, uh, it's the zen of stamping. <laughs> okay, so, okay, I'm not going to just put this over everything. What we're going to do is we're just going to diffuse some areas to bring in some of this, you know, white pigment, pigment ink influence into it, okay? I want the crispness in there, but I want it just contrasted against some diffusion and softness. Okay, so... Um, I'm not going to apply this super thick either. I'm just dabbing it slowly, okay? And after like 10 taps, I can't see anything, okay? And that, that's kind of the, the rate at which you want to apply it at. You don't want it, uh, you know, super definitive. You have to test out your pad here. Now, my pad is apparently kind of dry, so I'm kind of inking it up a little bit. But I'm not going into it really fast. Now, do you see that little bit of diffusion starting to happen? You know, that might be all we really want in there in terms of that little area. So see how different it looks from right here? And I'm doing it in the back right here because that represents a kind of little area on the cove that's a little bit of a farther distance away. I mean, it doesn't have to be that. You can do it in the front and the back, you know, is, you know, um, crisp. But as long as it's kind of oscillating a little bit between some white pigment ink and none, I think it looks a little bit better than having it kind of uniformly applied. So what does that mean in terms of an application kind of process is that you use less, okay? Don't uh, apply it everywhere, okay? Some people think that that looks like a harder thing to do, but it just means, again, you just don't apply so much of it, you know, like, uh, like with shading or something like that. If you want to retain light, then don't, you know, you know, blot off all of your, um, don't lose your light of a, if you're working on a white piece of paper, okay? And with this one, if you want to keep some aspects of crispness and detail and things like that, then don't cover it over 
or don't cover it all up at least. All right, so that is that. Let's do a little bit in the foreground here. This kind of just brings it together a lot more. Um, a lot of people are using very wet pads too when it comes to things like pigment inks uh, because we don't use them very often, I think, these days. So um, a lot of people's inks are really, really wet. So you go like this, and even if you blot it off a few times and you go with a really light touch, it's a very thick ink on there. So you might want to just test it on a piece of paper. See, like, mine barely shows up, okay? So inking it up heavily like that, okay? But see, it's still fairly light. I mean, I could get a big blob of it if I want to, but you want to apply it like that, and that's the way I'm applying it right over the top of that. So it makes it really easy in terms of an application process. If you have a really super wet, thick ink on here and you try to apply it very thinly, it's going to be really difficult to do so because it's just going to, you know, transfer in one, you know, tap or whatever, you know, with, a, I don't know, whatever, a 30%, you know, type of, uh, you know, transference of, a, you know, a full version of that ink. So just take it really slow and just tap it out really lightly. A lot of people start off doing this and they're tapping really lightly. They can't see anything happening after like five taps. So they go like, blah, you know, and it's much thicker, but sometimes it takes like 20 taps, you know, before you get like a 5% version, but that 5% kind of application of that ink is what you want. And if it takes, if you do it in 20 taps, a lot of times it's, you have a lot more control over it that way because you don't get these unexpected thicker applications of ink really fast. And, and I think that looks pretty good like that. Um, you know, I don't want that up there. Um, but like I said, maybe I should try to, you know, just kind of... That that was my fault uh, in terms of um, um, my application. You know, I didn't wipe off that part of the, uh, the stamp when I was stamping it out. So, you know, because I haven't done this before. But, uh, but again, I, you know, I can do something a little bit offset like this and put that you know, in a veil of like additional, you know, ink or something like that. But let, let me see something right here too. I wanted to see what this thing would look like, you know, on just a uh, paper. I guess we can cut this out too. That would be super easy to cut out. I don't want to cut it out though. Although we could. And then you can use, this is actually, like I said, this is sticker right here, but I wanted this perimeter like that. Uh, but I could cut this out and just put that over the top of a new piece of, uh, you know, paper too. So, but I, I'm just kind of curious. I want to see what this thing would look like on, um, formatted onto a piece of paper like this, like a card. Let's see it. Let's do this right here. Here, I'll use the, uh, the sticker aspect of this paper as well. If I can get this, sometimes it's hard to get the uh, edge of this thing going. It's like the hardest part of this card is kind of peeling off the uh, the sticker. Okay, let's see here. And this sticker paper is super, super stick. It is permanent. Okay. So make sure it's where you want it to be, you know, before you like touch down on there, because it might be really hard to uh, to remove. And then it's stuck, you know, and you're trying to pull it off, then it gets all these creases in there. So you know, just watch out for that. Okay, I'm just eyeballing a little bit of a white border around this. That uh, that holographic paper in there is kind of distracting because it's like it's like blinding me. 
with the uh, with the studio lights on it, and then plus it's kind of like a yeah, it's that holographic look. So um, my 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 depth perception is kind of getting a little wonky here, you know, with that uh, looking at this little whatever. It's like eighth of an inch, a uh, little border like that. It's kind of hard to tell. Some people, uh, one person, I mentioned this in uh, another live stream, but one person on um, um, Facebook um, replied to a, uh, or, you know, no, uh, me, uh, commented on one of my posts of when I was working with the, um, the, uh, the holographics, and they said they've tried it um, before, but they stopped doing that because it made them dizzy. <laughs> and I, and I know exactly what they're talking about because I had the same uh, notion at times um, when working on it. I, I, I mean, I, I never get dizzy working on it, but. You know, sometimes when you're looking at it, your your eyes are just like focusing um, really. OK, I need to change my exposure now that I've taken all that white paper out from underneath here. OK, here we go. But uh, yeah, um, sometimes when you're working on it and you have that glare, it's almost like a mirror in the background or, or maybe not a mirror, but um, it, there's a lot of different, you know, it's holographic, so, it, you know, it's it's giving you the those, like, illusion of space so your eye doesn't know what to focus on. And if you're constantly looking at something that's only, like, 12 inches from your eyes like that, and you're, you know, you're doing it for a few, you know, I don't know, whatever, half an hour or whatever long it is, um, you can feel it. You can feel your eyes kind of... Um, changing focus a little bit or not knowing what to focus on all right oh, this is just a piece of a uh, dark glossy cardstock this is the part that I with these mirrored pieces um, I'm not sure if I'm getting the uh, eyeballing these um, borders here uh, uniformly that one's a little bit off right there but All right, there's that. So again, I like I said, I, I might you know apply that uh, you know something else on there to obscure that, or I could put a little bit of white around this too. But um, just in terms of a finished piece, I think there's potential in this right here in terms of uh, that holographic. Again, I you know like I said, um, it's not a traditional or what you know uh, type of application of those templates like that but I or stencils but I just wanted to see um, how some of those stencils could potentially be utilized with these other types of things like foils and metallics you know the metallics I haven't seen them used on that for too uh, too many times if at all but um, yeah okay let's see right here So here's all these different colors on here. This is the, um, okay, that leaf looks like, uh, you know what? Okay, so if you have brilliance in different colors too, wouldn't that be awesome? I mean, if we did that little vignette in here in like a red or something like that, that would be kind of interesting. Or if you do one like a dominant leaf in here, like this, you know, with just the black, but then you can also have one's other leaves in here that are kind of offset, you know, the stencils. Or you can just have it coming in like at different angles like this too, potentially like that or whatever. 
um, like I've seen people do that looks really cool. That might look really cool like that, but look at that. I mean, that to me looks reasonably dimensional like that um, on there. Uh, I have that little white there that's a little bit offset too. If I offset this a little bit with some additional white around there, that might have been interesting. I can't do it now. Like, see like that right there? That looks kind of cool too. So if you did it a little bit offset like that, and then you bring your black and put it right here, so this the white would be a little bit like that, you know, around there, and then you do the black like that, that might be kind of interesting. Or you can, I don't know, or you do, oh. So you do the black like that, or like a red, this has probably done done a million times before too on like a white piece of paper now I'm thinking about it, but you can do it like that and then you offset it like that with black so it looks like a like a shadow or something like that and then that might look kind of interesting as well. Ba basically what I'm getting at is some sort of a, like dim more dimensional kind of application of that leaf in there. Um, I, like I said, you can cut it out too, and that would really, you know, be the d dimensional thing to do. But um, you know what I mean. If you if you're doing that, then you're you know you're utilizing another piece of paper to you know what I mean. Um, whereas this is yeah, if you can get it all in one. But I don't I don't know if you see what I'm talking about. That then there's there's that little white where you know what I mean. It's a little bit offset, but I think that white in there looks pretty good, like that. I'm just trying to think. I'm thinking out loud, folks. <laughs> I'm not definitive on any of these things like that. But see, I like that. I like where these colors come into play like this within the design like that. So for me, it was kind of um, tricky, kind of uh, just, it wasn't tricky, but I just had to kind of leave a general area open um, without having the actual image in there. Of knowing where to apply that white ink so the white ink was if you just came in it was like all up here you know with using the stencil okay so i applied white ink like right across here knowing that that's where that was going to go and then i saw on the image um that that lower portion was going to be right here so i blocked out that with white in there okay and then we did that all with black and then we came back over it again with the black and added that little bit of framing around here because that white alone I think wasn't going to be dark enough to separate that leaf from this overall area. There's That white is just, I don't think there was enough contrast in there. So we added that black kind of vignette perimeter with that leaf in there. This would be good. It, here's another thing too. This, you know, if I if we had some kind of word stamp in here or something like that, that would be cool. Um, you can do, I don't know, if you had something like something up here, maybe like a word stamp, you know, whatever fall color, you know, or something like that. You can, if this is happy birthday, someone has a fall birthday or something like that. Uh, and they were, you know, they were a canoeist and they lived in a area with deciduous trees. <laughs> So you, you need even happy birthday up here and I don't know, something down here. I don't, I don't know, you know, some sort of word, word stamp. I put, I'd put something up here and maybe down here. Um, and I think that would be kind of cool. Like this type of dynamic right here. Not four areas, I don't think. I think that would be too much. But um, let me see something. I always talk about all these things. I, I don't always uh, kind of apply it, <clears throat> but I think sometimes I probably should. Okay, so this one says silence. Okay, that'd be kind of cool. Dream would be cool. Um, let's see here. Scenically inspired beauty in nature. Follow your dream. I don't know. I don't know if that's going to fit up there. 
That'd be kind of interesting. Or uh, that doesn't fit down there. Peace. I use peace a gazillion times, or like all the time. Um, I don't know. Eh, I'm, I think I'm gonna do this one right here. Let me do follow your dream. Yeah, hey, that's kind of not to. Yeah, I didn't even think about that, but but it's kind of like fall follow. <laughs> Here's my favorite, uh, I should use this stamp all the time now, you know, in any type of fall type of scenario, follow your dream and see if anyone uh, that registers with anyone that hasn't been on this live stream right here. Okay, let me see. Okay, I haven't stamped this image in a while. Let me see if I... Make sure to just get it reasonably straight. Because this is scripty, so. Let's see, I need to bend it up a little bit more. Okay, there we go. You have to be careful about using um, the same pad that you use cotton on because you can get those little cotton little um, fibers in there and then if you go you know because I'm using it with a cotton ball to apply tone like that most of the time but if you go to the same pad with your imagery you might be picking up some of those fibers in that and then you stamp it out and it's got a little like a squiggle you know with the you know some of that fiber on there so just watch that with my um white pad I with oh, I'm sorry I'm stamping off screen here but with my white pad um I have two pads. One is for my cotton, C for cotton, and um, the uh, other one is for my for making impressions on. So let's see. Um, let me see here. Oh, here. Let's go. Dream. Oh, wait, if all your dreams, I don't want to say dream again. See how fast I forgot what I just stamped out. Oh, here's, let's see right here. This one says autumn leaves. Just like the song, huh? Okay, let's see. I need to practice my eyeball registration once in a while and see if it's reasonably straight. Otherwise, when I stamp stuff, it's like skewed a little bit. It's mine's usually tilted this way a little bit. So I need to see where I'm at. Yeah, with my eyeball registration once in a while. Uh, a little bit over that. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, it's all right. All right. So this is how this looks right here. Get that autumn leaves right down there. Uh, it's a little bit over my, tw you know, branch right there, but, uh, oh, so be it. This is like a, a test piece right here just to see what things would look like. Um, okay, so... In terms of the imagery, just keeping in mind um, the area of that you can color within the actual image when it's you know confined in a given space is something that needs to be considered. If you're going to do this thing where it's all kind of interior oriented, now that I look at that though, I'm trying to think. Okay, so if I stamp this image and it went out here. I was going to do that thing where you stamp out your imagery and then it's all in kind of out. It goes all the way out to the sides like that. 
but only in your kind of designated area is it colored. But now that I look at this, when I imagine these trees kind of continuing out this way, and this other imagery down here, maybe some foliage or something down here, I think that might have worked like that, because I think having this area designated off with that stronger black vignette, I think that would have worked okay, potentially, now I look at it, um, because, you know, that's a pretty solid black up there, and if it was right next to that coming out of there, um, I don't know, it might have been able to handle that just fine. That'll be something to try another time, or just in color on a white piece of paper, but um, that dimensional aspect of just kind of having this kind of floating area in here I think is kind of cool like that. So I think that's worthy of a kind of a future type of, a, I don't know, further kind of experimentation on there. I kind of I like how that really stands out against that background. But yeah, I mean, if I'm just going to leave it like that, I wish I didn't have that little part in there, so I'll have to try to think of a way to obscure that. I I don't know if that'll lift off of that uh, this, because it's not foil, it's printable vinyl, so it really grabs that ink really pretty firmly. Um, yeah, I mean, like, the simple way to eradicate that was just, like I said, I can cut this whole thing out and just, you know, put that on it. No. <clears throat> on another piece of this vinyl like that, if I want that perimeter of uh, colors like that. So uh, white pigmenting too could potentially work, but then again, I'd be obscuring some of the uh, tones out there, but maybe it can look like clouds. So I don't know. Another thing you know you can do is um, you can take your template too, uh, which, I'm, which would probably be the best thing to do. And then you just, you know, trace around in there and then cut out a mask to place down here and then add um, whatever you need to in the background white pigmenting for clouds or something like that you know just so you're not getting on in that interior like that so but again yeah uh experiment with the template um where'd my paper go Experiment template, template, I mean, uh, stencil, stencil, holographic stencil, holographic stenciling. <laughs> uh, pretty, oh, maybe I shouldn't add that in there. I just changed the exposure again on this. So anyway, that is that. Uh, glad you like it, Travel Dreamer. The very first, is it a Sweet Poppy stencil? Yes, it is. Sweet Poppy stencil. <clears throat> SP6125ML. Whatever that stands for. Maybe someone's initial of who, whatever designer it was. I'm not quite sure. That's the way we used to do it at uh, a stamp of the hand when it came to the initials where the first two codes or something like that might have been the size or something like that. I'm not quite sure. Uh, happy Canada Day there, Travel Dreamer. Uh, let's see. Buddy, hello, buddy. Buddy Cheryl, good to see you uh, again. Thanks for checking it out there. Uh, just turning the stencil a bit. Circle L or... Uh, R would allow room for the sten something. Oh, Canada, I'm just across the bridge from Windsor. I have only been to Canada once, I think. Twice. I don't remember it. BC for sure, and just uh, Vancouver. And one time I was flying to Europe, and we uh, we made a stop somewhere. I think it was Alberta. Or I don't remember. Um, twice there, but I always wanted to get up there. Um, they wanted me to teach. I forgot where it was. I think I was at the. I'm trying to think of where the the big group of uh, 
Canadian uh, stampers would come down in a group from to what show it was. I think it was one of the um, Ohio shows, and I'm assuming it might have been Stamp Away because that was such a big event, like four days. <clears throat> or it could have been the um, the Akron Ohio show that uh, that I see them at a uh, contingent of uh, people driving down. Yeah, I don't remember. But uh, yeah, I always wanted to get up there. I just never got around to it. Stem of the leaf. Oh, got it there. Yeah. Anyway. All right, folks. That is that. What time is it right here? Hey, we finished early. <laughs> it's not like a... 3 a.m. or whatever it is, you know, a lot of times when I'm jumping on it so late at night, you know, when I finally get around to my stamping table right here. But I want to test out some different things. I've been really hesitant to buy different colors of Brilliance Pigment Ink because I'm just worried that they're going to discontinue those. But that Brilliance Ink and this type of um, printable vinyl make for a pretty dynamic combination because of the... Uh, the rate at which those types of, uh, that line of inks dries and adheres to this surface like this. I mean, this is, you know, a surface oriented um, pigment ink that where most pigment inks on just whatever type of surface you're using it on, I mean, they may take a little bit of time to dry. Now, Brilliance is meant to dry fast though um, but this printable vinyl, it dries really fast. And not only that, it adheres. I don't need to spray seal this at all. I mean, there's nothing on here that, um, you know, is coming off of my hands. I just, you know, I just recently stamped that out. I mean, it's been like, whatever, 10, 5, 10 minutes now. But, um, but it's not a problem. But this right here, like I'm saying, um, would have been cool in a, a different type of color, I think. Or you can do... I don't know, reds and oranges or something like that, and, you know, put some sort of imagery in there. I think that would be kind of interesting. Mega Meat in Michigan. Well, now, what's that, Travel Dreamer? Is that a show? Uh, like a stamping scrapbook show in Michigan or something like that? Or just, you know, general crafting show? That sounds really familiar. I just can't remember. Hello, Annie. Yeah, Annie, uh, the printable vinyls there. I made a couple goofs on it, you know, in terms of uh, impression things on here, but I wanted to just to test what the stencil, you know, type of thing, kind of, I don't know what you would call it, image uh, stencil confinement or whatever would look like in here. But look how kind of dimensional this looks in here. You know, it looks reasonably uh, 3D on here. So Annie, you know, you know the process of the whole foil uh, pieces in here. So white pigment ink as a base, right? And then I put this over the top of it. Well, I, you know, you could have done it all in one fell swoop, but white pigment ink over it. And then the black ink vignetting around there with the black uh, brilliant sink like that and then just stamping the imagery right on into the center but I over stamped right there because I didn't uh, I took off the inks around the side of the image but not on the top there so it stamped out and I stamped out my A over the top of that stem there so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but like I said it was an experiment just to see what you know that stenciling would look like on the hol holographic like that so um so folks, Annie W. right there um, has made um, the, uh, the, uh, the mirror cards and sold them. So I always tell people in these live streams, not all the time, but when I'm doing like the latest uh, mirror card live streams, I tell people what you told me about your customers buying multiple of the, the mirror cards because they wanted to see what they did. You know, so which is my whole point about those mirror cards looking kind of like 3D and um, almost having motion to them just from the fact, you know, how you. Um, 
you know, what these things look like when you're opening and closing them like that, you know, giving motion and whatnot and having it look a little bit more kind of three-dimensional and raised like that, you know, so any, any, uh, yeah, I tell people about your, uh, what you told me on that one as far as your products go, um, so if anyone, um, makes and, uh, sells cards, you know, think about the, uh, the mirror cards for that or, you know, just anything. I mean, that's adding like an extra sense of dynamics to it. But again, it's, it relates to what this video is right here. And that's using these kind of, um, dynamic types of surfaces that are just inherently attention getting to begin with, you know, and it's just a matter of kind of implementing, you know, other types of things into it. You know, you just give a card and it's going to be a blank piece of a, you know, holographic on there or something like that. You know, we're stampers, so we're going to be stamping something into it. But starting off with something kind of already inherently dynamic and something that, you know, you know, people haven't seen before. A lot of people haven't seen like holographics like this before or in a card format or whatever, or just mirrored, you know, mirrored pieces, you know, where... Um, like in a mirror card, um, you know, something is going on in there. There's motion inherent in that. If it's a mirror card, it's reflecting, you know, the lighting that's in the area or what they've stamped on the top area like that. So, um, yeah, a bit left or right of straight up. Got it. Uh, huge gathering of stampers and scrapbookers multiple days. What month is that travel dreamer? And what, it, where was that? Where was the mega meet? I know it's in Michigan. Uh, I'll look it up. I'll look it up. Yeah, it's yeah, it's pretty fun, Annie. Uh, give it a try. Annie, I, I can't remember. Did you get the printable vinyl? I we worked on we worked on just the the mirrored card stocks, the foil card stocks. I don't know if you have the printable vinyl, but I know you have everything else. You know, in terms of the. Uh, the media in there. It was pretty, seeing 10 people standing around my booth, twisting and turning the mirror cards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, that's what we want right there. We want a uh, really dynamic, uh, you know, dynamic kind of um, features, right? In, you know, um, in our, in our pieces like that. So it, uh, yeah, I love, I love that, that they're doing that like that. People get curious. It, it's like a mirror card is like, to me, it's almost like, uh, I don't know. The spirit to me is like, like a pop-up card naturally or something like that. But it's almost like it's like a world into itself. When I, when I look at those mirror cards, even though I'm making them, you know, myself and watching them develop, when I, when I go back to those and I look at those, I get the same feeling that I used to have as a kid when I, you know, you look into those like eggs. I don't know if you guys have ever seen those eggs where you look into that and there's like a whole little scenario inside there like that. Uh, my mom used to make, she, I don't know, she made them before I was born, but there were these Easter eggs and they're like a made out of like sugar and uh, you don't eat them. But uh, on the inside, there was like a whole little set, like a little scenario of like a little scene inside. So every Easter, I used to love looking in those, you know, when those would be out as decorations. But it's like looking into a like a different world or something like that um that's kind of alive or you know it, you know with these you know speaking of the mirror things they're kind of alive because they're moving and whatever and then if you incorporate you can like i said you can incorporate anything in there but if you incorporate in they're just already kind of moving around like that um but then if you incorporate holographics too holographics are you know influenced by the light so it's just constantly changing it's never the same looking um seemingly three-dimensional space anytime you look at it you know it's always different and it depends on kind of you know the different lighting you have i i don't think this is going to matter on this one but let me see what this one looks like with an incandescent bulb on there oh it did change i didn't think so you know 
This is my incandescent bulb on here. Look at that lighting like, well, okay, that's my actual light like that, but look at the light. Man, that is insane. So it's just, yeah, that whole other kind of warmer spectrum of light on there. Uh, that really looks different on that printable vinyl. I don't know if I've ever tested it like that. I don't know, huh? That looks pretty good like that. Let's see. Yeah, look at that little canoeist down there. Huh. That yeah, looks pretty good. <laughs> All right, so I can, you know, in order for me to view this piece for now on, it has to be in an incandescent light situation. <laughs> See, that's, that's the way my, um, my thumbnail, you know, should be on the, uh, you know, for this, uh, for this video, <laughs> for the, uh, things that's gonna, that's a little bit more, uh, kind of attention getting like that, but that looks like a cool little sunset area in there, doesn't it? All right. So, um, if you have like, uh, you've changed all your light bulbs in your house to, uh, you know, much more energy efficient LEDs. Actually, I don't know what LEDs would look like here. I'm, the other lighting in my room right here over my desk until I switch it all out, they're all fluorescent bulbs, which probably dulls colors a lot, you know, but uh, I do have one swing arm uh, desk lamp, you know, that's just that. Actually, no, the swing arm desk lamp that I have in here, it, I keep thinking it's incandescent, it's, it's LED but it's LED warm or something like that, or sunlight, okay? But, uh, yeah. So if you if you only have like nice, efficient uh, fluorescent bulbs in here, switch them all out again so that when you look at your cards, they look better. <laughs> but people are probably on, you know, LED now or something like that. So uh, I don't know, fluorescent bulbs might be, there might be some fixtures in like uh, like kitchens or something like that with that. <laughs> but yeah. Um, anyway, huh. Fun stuff, sugar eggs, yes. I always asked my mom, I said, why don't you make those anymore? Like when I was a little kid, you know, she says, ah, those things took so much time. We had the molds for them, these plastic molds, but uh, uh, I don't know. I guess it was like a big thing. And I think a lot of the stuff inside was made out of like frosting or I don't know, some sort of thing like that. It was uh, pretty cool. One of them, I think it was like a, I think one of them was, I don't know what it was. I think there was like a, a little house in one of them. And another one was like a field with like some rabbits in it with like that uh, Easter, you know, plastic Easter grass or something like that. I wonder if she still has those somewhere. I haven't seen those in years. Etched onto the surface, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. So Annie, yeah. Uh, I don't know if you have some stencils. It's pretty cool. It's pretty fun to work with. Sugar eggs. Uh, the mirror cards remind me of the old Viewmaster. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. We had Viewmasters with a bunch of stuff. It was usually of like um, Disney World or something like that, or the uh, the monuments, that type of thing. I used to love looking through those Viewmasters. Yeah, <laughs> Linda D. Oh my, O O M G. <laughs> a different globe. Yeah. Who would have thought? All right, I didn't think that would look, uh, you know, that would change that so much, but uh, yeah, that looks so much better uh, than uh, than it did before. But anyways, I'll, I'm going to try working with these stencils a lot more, though. I want to I want to see what uh, what uh, um, kind of different framing uh, for different scenes and imagery can do, and I've seen it in um, like the sweet poppy stencils. <clears throat> their examples and stuff like that, which look really amazing. I just wanted to try to incorporate um, some of the holographics or um, like these uh, just foils into the mix a little bit and see what that would look like. Um, it's a little bit different um, when working with the stencils because the stencils 
you know, applied to like white pieces of paper. You can use like any color or any media and it adheres to, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, a piece of cardstock, you know, be it, I don't know, whatever cardstock um, they're using a lot. Um, I don't know what Eileen uses, but um, uh, on the foils and especially the darker foils, we're talking about more of a reverse impression or a reverse print of it's not really print but uh it's the reverse of that you know image on there as opposed to this being dark on light sometimes we're having to go light on dark so um it's a little bit of a different thing with uh working with the pigment inks like that but on this one right here like i said we threw on that vignette like that so that um answered that uh, type of thing but it was the vignette the black vignette over the white brilliance that you know allowed us to do the, I guess we could have done that without it but then we couldn't have colored anything in there so I don't know just playing around with some different stuff like that so anyway uh fun stuff and my gosh that looks so different than from uh just the uh um fluorescent uh you know the bulbs in here in this uh on my desk area here so Thanks, uh, everyone. Thanks for checking out the live stream. And my little experiment here. All right, have a great rest of evening, folks. I don't, I'm not going to turn off that uh, light. That looks like so much better like that. <laughs> and it gave it that vignette around there, too, kind of obscuring, uh, you know, some of those different things in there. So, um, yeah. I just, I just love that look right in there, though. You know? I think that looks really fun like that. So, uh, yeah. Uh, have a either an incandescent or have like a swing arm bulb to reflect off of your uh, your piece <laughs> or your pieces in there now look at this now we do this right here you can add a, like even like some stars you know out on the perimeter like up here and that would be kind of cool with a little white um paint pen uh out there and i'm kind of tempted to do it i'm not going to do it here but uh, but that would look kind of cool in there First star of the evening. All right, Linda D. Goodbye. Good night, uh, Annie. Annie, you're almost at midnight, but you're a night. Uh, you're a night owl anyway. CM Hawkins, thanks for joining in. Thanks to everyone else for joining in. Whoever's watching, if anyone's watching, and hope to see you on the next uh, live stream.